Hi, hello everyone. Welcome. My name is Alyssa and I have been unexplainably consumed by the Women's Prize for Fiction this year. It is inexplicable. I have never cared a whole lot about uh, prizes. I just... I guess I just wasn't in really in that realm. Um, I mean, starting a few years ago, BookTube sort of brought it to my attention, but I've definitely never like anticipated a list being announced or wanted to read the long list. Uh, but this year, I have. I, I was really anticipating the release and I have a theory as to why and I think it's because I'm going crazy in lockdown. Just the situation of being in isolation so much um, means that reading, which is a huge comfort to me, uh, the something like a, a book prize makes this comfort experience a little bit more communal and to feel a little bit more connectedness to other people, uh, like shared experiences. I'm clearly <laughs> deprived for that. The Women's Prize has kind of fallen into my lap as something that I care about this year and uh, so because of that I thought it'd be fun to make a bit of a reaction video. I have read a few books on this list so mostly I wanted to talk about the books I've read and my reading plans going forward in case you are likewise wanting to read um, some of these books or like to keep an eye on the prize and you would be interested in my reviews or reading reading that list and wanted to follow along then anyway this is that announcement video i have read two and a half of the books on this list i read the vanishing half by Britt bennett last july uh exciting times by nisha dolan um uh, in the fall and i am almost done with no one is talking about this by patricia lockwood so rather quickly my thoughts on these books i say rather quickly it's not going to happen that way so I read The Vanishing Half in July just after it came out and I remember really enjoying the book for the most part, the reading experience I enjoyed. I remember thinking that the author uh, had really crafted this novel in a way that was very uh, engaging as a reader. The like the way the story was put together felt like I just really enjoyed the way that the story unraveled. I liked the characters and the way that they connected to each other. I remember not... Uh, I remember enjoying the writing and not having, uh, you know, any complaints about it, but it didn't really stand out to me as really uh, extraordinary or s remarkable in any way. Uh, and I think that that's one reason I maybe was a little bit surprised that this book was on the list. Um, but I also think uh, another reason is that when I read the book, I felt that it was a little bit overhyped. I didn't think it quite lived up to the hype. However, I could see this at the time and I see it even more now that The Vanishing Half really came out at a time when the United States was having a very harsh and necessary and uncomfortable reckoning with the fact we are not very good at listening to black voices. And I think this book, independent of its quality, like it was already a good book and poised to do well, um, the time that it came out um, in the context of the world at that moment meant that it just was launched into the stratosphere in terms of uh, how many people were reading it and all the hype that it was getting and in a way that no book could recover from. I don't think any book could live up to the hype that that book was getting. Um, in my opinion, I and maybe this didn't, not everyone sort of heard so much about it at the time, but this was such a hyped book. Um, and so I don't know exactly how to reconcile the feeling of it being overhyped because I think that that uh, is not, was never, its hype was never exclusively about the book and its quality. And um, not that that's a, a good or a bad thing, uh, you know, that's really neutral and not the book's fault in any way, but I think that in some ways the book has become almost like a token child of uh, representing listening to black voices and for that reason I'm not at all surprised that it's on the list. I do think that the book passes the threshold of quality of what I would expect for um, a literary prize but not necessarily uh, as good of quality as I would expect to win the prize. I don't really see this one winning the prize. However, maybe because I a book that wins a book prize in many ways, I like the idea of it being something that really represents the moment of of time of that year that it wins, you know? And um, I think that sometimes we talk about books being timely and sometimes book prizes 
are looking for books that are maybe on the precipice of sort of a new a new moment we're transitioning into i don't think this book is that i think this book uh the vanishing half is about this moment that we are sitting in right now and in that way i think that if this book won the woman's prize um if in 20 years someone were reading this list wanting uh of you know a glimpse of what 2020 was like this book captures at least a facet of our world in 2020 and i mean now it's 2021 but um you know the year that it was published anyway that was a lot of thoughts on the vanishing half i already have a review on this book on my channel and which is probably why i talked about it so much right now is because i know i'm not going to revisit it in terms of like making another video dedicated to this book in reference to this prize so there you go that's like all of my thoughts on the matter um the uh exciting times by nisha dolan is the other book that i read and i really liked this book this is a millennial uh, author. It's a millennial story. It's an Irish expat living in Hong Kong. I just realized I didn't tell you what The Vanishing Half is about, but if you don't know what that's about, then I don't know what you've been doing. <laughs> it's everywhere. Anyway, Exciting Times is also about sort of relationships and a messy triangular love relationship situation. Um, I, I mean, I don't know exactly how what to call it because it is very unconventional for the most part. Um, and this book, personally, I didn't overly care for, like, the plot or the characters, but I was obsessed with the internal narrative dialogue and voice of the main character. That narrative voice and the ethereal voice in the novel was 10 out of 10 amazing. And I think it captures the intricacies of a lot of the a millennial experience, even the young millennial experience edging into like Gen Z. And I think for a book prize, maybe that might be appealing and representing a young demographic. Millennials are like mostly in their 30s now, so that's not an extremely young demographic. Um, but I think that I think that that could still be probably wrongly seen as a little bit too young or too specific in terms of its representation. Um, I don't know about that, um, but I think it does a really, really good job of capturing uh, things like the social anxiety, the uh, uh, sexual identity, financial and economic insecurities. And in my opinion, the writing quality is really phenomenal. And her narrative voice is just really, really amazing, very distinct, and it feels very fully formed. It feels like she really knows her authorial voice. It is really, really strong, in my opinion. I loved, loved the writing in this book. But I don't think it would be for everybody, and I don't think that it would be a lot of people's definition of real eloquence or really, you know, poetic prose. It's not that. It's more like very sharp and precise and exacting in its wit and its observatory nature. Um, it's very hard to describe, but I really, really liked it. I think because she's a debut author, it's unlikely that she would win the prize, but personally, I really liked this book, and I think I would really like it if this book made it to the shortlist. We'll see. No One Is Talking About This by Patricia Lockwood. I have about 50 pages left in this book, and it's like around 200 pages. And so I feel like I've gotten a good vibe for what the book is about, but I, I'm not going to get too far into it because I haven't finished it. Um, I am planning to make a review for this book, uh, so you can watch for that on my channel if you'd be interested. But so far, I think this is an extremely interesting book. It is unique in its form, it's unique in its content. Um, the, the, what it's about is, uh, very much about internet culture. Um, it's about our contemporary world and interacting with, um, our sort of virtual and online spaces, that world, as well as our physical world, how these are competing with each other. I think this is extremely interesting and I think it is a very unique and budding new field of literature. Um, and I think this book is really ahead of its time in, in terms of that. I think that it would be easy to dismiss this book as being extremely niche um, and 
and feeling that it is uh, maybe like trying too hard or it's overly specific appealing to internet culture but I would strongly disagree with that um, by the very fact that you are watching this video on the internet right now. I think that the internet has entirely infiltrated our lives and I think we're not looking really directly and aggressively at the psychology of how that is affecting our lives, the manifestation of internet culture in the physical world and physical nature of our lives and relationships and recreation and knowledge and humor and communication methods and things like that. I think it's very, very fascinating um, as like an area of literature and study. Personally, it really appeals to me. I'm very interested to see where it goes. I think that's all I'll say for now since I haven't finished it, but like I said, um, stick around if you want the review when I put that up, probably this week. So as for the other books on the list, I really feel that I have no qualifications to say whether or not they should be there or shouldn't be there if I haven't read them. Um, so I'm not going to speak to that at all. Instead, I'm going to talk about the ones that I feel really excited to read. The first one is Paranesi by Susanna Clark. And this one, I, I had seen the cover around, but had never really knew what it was about. Um, it sounds very, very abstract and like maybe a book that is better to go into a little bit blind. Um, it, it seems fantastical in the sense that it doesn't really seem to happen in our world or take place in our world, but is about a man who lives in a labyrinth and there's like another entity that is also there with him and um, I think it's maybe going to be playing with ideas of reality. I have no idea. All the One-Armed Sister Sweeps Her House by Sherry Jones is a book that takes place in Barbados and is about um, expats, uh, wealthy expats living in Barbados and a clash between them and the local citizens. And I think that it has sort of like crime, maybe some mystery or maybe it's more like thriller elements. Um, I'm not sure. I've I've heard um, that this is a bit of an intense book, um, maybe a little bit uh, violent. Um, personally, I think this sounds really interesting. I'm hoping that it is about class conflict um, because I think that that is a really uh, something that's really going to be coming to the forefront in literature if it hasn't already and I'm just not observing it. I think that we're starting to see it come to the front in um, in a lot of online so social culture and definitely in a film. So I'm surprised we haven't seen it a little bit more in literature. I'm hoping that this maybe deals with that. I think that would be really, really interesting. Luster by Raven Leilani. I don't know why, but even though um, booktubers whose taste I really trust have raved about this book or, um, you know, compared it to other books that I've liked, such as as exciting times. I haven't felt inclined to pick this book up, but since it's on this list, maybe I will. Um, I believe that this is also millennial fiction. That might be one of the reasons I've been hesitant to pick it up because even though I liked exciting times, I was uh, pretty ambivalent about Sally Rooney, um, like hard pass on uh, my year of rest and re relaxation. I felt like uh, millennial fiction was a real hit and miss for me, but it would be really nice if this one ended up being really, really interesting. I understand it's about a black young woman living in New York and becoming involved with a married man, and I think that that's a little bit of a complex and uh, modern, messy relationship. And if the author's literary uh, technique and skill really comes through. I think this could be a book that I really enjoy, but um, like the premise doesn't really interest me too much. We'll see, um, but this one is also kind of short, so I think that I'll uh, try and get to this one as well, especially in terms of sort of rounding out my experience with millennial fiction. I think that that, I think that I'll probably try and read this one too. Consent by Annabelle Leon also sounds really interesting to me. I find this one a little bit difficult to describe, but it sounds as if we have two different sets of siblings. I think there'll be themes of grief and loss and the idea of uh, making choices for other people. Um, I, I I don't actually care to know a whole lot more of what the book is about because the the blurb 
hooked me enough to be interested in reading it. I like the themes of sister relationships and uh, like siblings that we're seeing a pattern of on this list. I think that's rather interesting and I wonder maybe uh, what is provoking that. I noticed that theme in film and TV a few years ago or like yeah like two years ago. Um, so I am wondering if maybe this is uh, maybe literature just uh, following that trend but a little bit delayed. I'm not sure. I think it's very interesting though and I would really like to see how this book tackles um, those kinds of relationships. I suspect that the female relationships would be rather complex. If you think I should prioritize this book, let me know. I definitely want to get to it but I think it's a little bit lower on my priority right now so tell me if I should change my mind on that. Unsettled Ground by Claire Fuller is another book about sibling relationships and it sounds like adult siblings dealing with uh, grief and sort of the aftermath of their mother's death and um, this one sounds like it has sort of an eerie feel to it, or maybe a little bit of mystery and I really don't know what to expect but there's something about it that I think does sound really intriguing so um, I do want to read this one too. Summer by Ali Smith of course. Um, of course that's on this list and of course I want to read it. Um, Winter was one of my favorite reads of last year but I haven't read Spring yet and so for that reason I'm I'm feeling a little bit intimidated because I feel like I have to read Spring if I'm going to read Summer and uh, <laughs> that feels unfair that I would have to read two books just to read one on this list but I really I well I mean it's in my I have a goal to read all of her quartet this year anyway to finish off the quartet with these last two books. So maybe I'll prioritize that for now. I don't feel that I'm in the mood for Ally Smith at this exact moment so hopefully maybe I will be soon. I feel like there is a really good chance even though I haven't read this book. I just expect that Ally Smith will make the short list and so I think that I'm not going to prioritize this um, as being like one of the first books that I get to but I definitely want to read it like for sure for sure. Detransition Baby by Tori Peters is the last one that I'm going to mention here on like my priority of lists that I want of like books that I want to read on this list. Um, and this is a story, this is very much like a representational and trans story. Um, we have a trans woman and a, uh, a man who transitioned to be a woman and then detransitioned back to being a man and then a cis woman and um, I think there is a breakup and an affair and an unexpected pregnancy and this sort of triangular relationship I suspect is going to um, be a sort of a hybrid familial relationship um, and explore some of the complexities of the trans experience. Um, that's what I'm suspecting. I think this does sound interesting and I've definitely gotten um, the vibe, the buzz the buzz on the street is that this is a really really great book um, so I want to pick it up just for that but I also have to admit that I am not well read in trans stories in fact I don't think I've ever read a trans author or a book that is really um, deliberately exploring that experience so I would like to rectify that and I think this book would be great in terms of like my personal diversity in my reading Okay, now I don't mean to be negative, but I think there are a few books on this list that immediately don't stand out to me as ones that I'm going to prioritize um, getting to. If they make it to the short list, then I might bother with them, but there are a few that just really don't sound interesting to me. I think Because of You by John French is the first one that immediately comes to mind, and I don't know exactly what to say. First of all, the cover is really off-putting to me. That is immediately very uninteresting to me, and in fact looks like a child's education manual or something like that to me um, and then learning that it is actually a um, sort of a tense book about um, uh, like a stillbirth and an abduction and uh, it, it, this this is not a, like the kind of story that would interest me at all and the disconnect between the story and the cover is like alarming to me. Was it blurbed wrong or was the cover like like the disconnect just makes me feel like it would not be worth my time to read and that is an assumption 
and perhaps that's not fair um, if you would counter that and you have read this and it's worth it then by all means let me know I don't think that this is one that I'm gonna worry about though the golden rule by Amanda Craig this could end up being interesting but it's not something that would naturally appeal to me and so all like 100% of the reason that I would read it would be because it's on this list and so until I hear a little bit more hype and like people whose tastes I approve of um, vouching for this book I think I won't won't reach for it. I think Small Pleasures by Claire Chambers and Nothing But Blue Skies by by Kathleen McMahon. Both of these I think I just feel ambivalent about. Now I don't mean to be elitist except yeah I kind of do that's like that is that's what's behind what I'm saying here but these books um, they kind of sound like suburban club book club picks and I don't think that means that it can't be a good book, but I have very low, uh, a very low success rate with enjoying books that I would put into this category from my first impression of them. Um, and so because of that, I'm just going to steer clear of them um, we we'll maybe revisit this if they make it to the short list. We'll see. I realized I totally skipped Transcendent Kingdom by Yagasi, and that's actually because it fits right between these two categories. I don't think it actually fits in either of them. The author, Yagasi, I've heard so many good things about her that I definitely want to read her, um, but this book specifically, the blurb, didn't really call out to me. I didn't I think it sounded super interesting, so I think until I hear a little bit more um, buzz about this book or hear it recommended a bit more, I'll probably just hold tight and work on all the other books on this list and we'll see how it goes, I guess. So those are my thoughts for anyone who cared and if you don't then that's totally fine. Um, if you're like planning to follow this this prize at all, I would love to know uh, maybe any books you've already read or what you're planning to read, um, any thoughts you've had, um, or even your just thoughts on the whole list as a whole. Were you were you pleased with it? Were you satisfied? Were you disappointed? Um, also, I have been really bad at, at reading recent releases, so, so if there's a book you felt really should have been on this list and wasn't, I totally want to know what that is. Like, spill the tea. What should have been on this list? I'm super excited for this little project for myself. I definitely don't have time for it, but I think it'll be really, really fun, and especially to engage in sort of the community that rises up around book prizes. I think that'll be really fun. I'm a bit intimidated because some of the booktubers that I really enjoy watching that are really big and always do book prize stuff um, are so well versed in this, and they feel like they've noticed the patterns of, you know, what gets on to long lists or short lists or whatever and I'm just gonna be like this silly newbie, newbie that has no idea and just be like I liked this one I hope this is on the short list but like that's the fun like that's the point that's just to be fun so thanks so much and have a great day bye